night, guys. It is a hallelujah night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a rainy night in paradise. It bugs in a jar farm on Labor Day or Labor Night or whatever. So uh, now I make it Monday, September 5th, 2022. So I have been laboring over a big pile of a five gallon bucket of tomatoes making some big old thing of salsa and now I need to get laboring over I actually cooked this dog his his dinner his his food it is cheaper to buy chicken at Walmart than dog food and uh, so now that I'm done with the salsa get out the cooking dinner for my dog but I'm gonna take a short break here tonight because I feel like sometimes on Collapse Chronicles we you know we forget about the young folks you know the young folks who are really gonna be uh, soaking up this mess that we're leaving them and I don't know what percentage of my now 5,000 plus subscribers on my, my guess is 80% of my subs are probably over 50, if not over 60 years old. So every once in a while, check in with the youngsters. And here is a youngster, a 22-year-old. Never heard of this young man in my entire life. Never heard the name. But right here in uh, in the mainstream media, he is, uh, I guess he's some actor named Timothy Chalamet, whoever that is. Timothy Chalamet says it is, quote, tough to be alive as a young person in 2022. Yes, it is. Well, Timothy, I hate to tell you, it's tough to be alive as an old fart. So he is this pretty boy. Okay, take it away. What is on Timothy Chalamet's mind? Maybe you have heard of this person if you were under the age of 23. Being a person, <laughs> being a person existing in the world in 2022 is not an easy thing. And Timothy Chalamet, as one of the humans trying their best to exist knows that social media is part of what makes that endeavor so damn hard. Uh, yes, it is. Social media does make it even tougher to be a person existing in the world than it would without social media. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we're going to skip over uh, this stuff about social media. Uh, okay. While he acknowledged that social media can have positive effects, Timothy did not hold back about the fact that social media is a big part of what makes existing in the world a very tough thing in 2022. Oh, and he also hinted that he thinks the complete breakdown of society as we know it could be nigh. So, there is that. Quote, this is quoting... I guess he's in, uh, they were interviewing him at the Venice Film Festival about his new movie, Bones and All. Bones and All. So this is what he came up with in this interview at the Venice Film Festival. Quote, Without casting judgment, you can find your tribe. Yes, you can find your tribe, you know, on social media, but I think it is tough to be alive now. I think societal collapse is in the air, 
or it smells like it is. And without being pretentious, that is why, hopefully, movies matter. Yes, because that is the role of the artist, to shine a light on what is going on. Close quote. So good for ten of these. So to recap, number one, being alive in the modern world is a difficult nightmare. Number two, social media is part of what makes being alive in the modern world such a difficult damn nightmare. Oh, and number three, Timothy Chalmay thinks society might collapse any day now. And Timothy Chalamet is exactly right. He is probably the most intelligent 22-year-old little pretty boy actor uh, that I have ever had, that I've ever heard of. Good for you, brother. I mean, I'll, I'll joke it aside. You, you, you know, we need these 22-year-old little beautiful people pop stars and movie stars, whatever, at the Venice Film Festival, you know, pointing out that we are teetering on the edge while well, he's talking about societal collapse, but I guess uh, we're, we're going to talk about some more young people now, not thinking just about the imminent collapse of global society, but of the planet. All right. So what's it like to be a young person trying to save the world? I have been uh, trying to save the world now. Good guy. I'm going on 10 years of trying to save the world, and uh, I hate to report uh, that I have completely failed in my mission to, to save the world that I started. Actually, it was 2008, I guess. I started on my mission to save the world. And I have completely failed, uh, and social media has been part of my nightmare journey, yet I keep coming back like a moth to the flame, even though I'm in deluded old fart. What's going on with the deluded young farts thinking they can save the world at this point? This is USA Today, Labor Day. Trying to save the world is leaving young climate change activists exhausted and frustrated. Yes, I, I speak from, good God, 12, 14 years of experience. I can, I, I can let the young people know trying to save the world is both exhausting and frustrating. I do not recommend trying to save the world at this point. Uh, there is nothing in it for you trying to save the world. You need to be out there enjoying it while you still can, you young whippersnapper. Because you, by the time you're my age, you got some bad news, guys and girls. But anyway, what is, uh, how is USA Today spinning this? Rising seas, deadly heat waves, mass migration, and famine. That is the future. Today's young climate change activists are fighting to avoid. Yeah, right. But many say it is an even more difficult struggle than they imagined. Yes, be you know, being a kid and trying to uh, you know turn back the rising seas, trying to cool down the deadly heat waves, trying I guess to build a wall against the mass migration and feed what is it, 22 million Somalians who never should have been born. You know, that gets really exhausting and frustrating, feeding 22 million starving children who never should have been born. Across the globe, 
across the globe, young people, just not any young people I have ever met, not that I meet many young people, across the globe, young people are overwhelmingly concerned about the potential impact of climate change. According to a study last year surveying 10,000 people aged 16 to 25 across 10 countries, 84% of respondents reported being at least moderately worried about the climate crisis. And imagine if this 84% of these young kids uh, moderately worried about the climate crisis actually understood what uh, I and Book Hermit and Andy the Gardener and now Robert Jensen and Wes Jackson have all been saying climate change has nothing to do with it. Okay? Has nothing to do with it. If, if the climate crisis did not exist, the youngsters of today would still be facing a, you know, uh, a, a future from hell. It has nothing to do with climate change. So all of this crap uh, about trying to fix the climate is going to do absolutely nothing to change their future of hell. And when they figure this out, when Greta Thunberg, uh, you know, figures out that all of her frustrating, exhausting work has amounted to nothing. Uh, we will see if she finally becomes a doomer chick. Okay. That concern, that, you know, that false concern has spawned a wave of teenagers and young adults who have become central and conveying the long-term effects of global warming, causing figures such as Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg to rise to international prominence. Multiple young activists told USA Today they are motivated to keep moving forward, but the challenges and distractions, yes, distractions from saving the world, they just keep piling up. Some worry that their frustration could one day turn to apathy. Can't have that happen. Maybe their frustration can turn to getting out there and enjoying it while they still can. Maybe going and making some organic salsa and enjoying that while they still can. Quote, this is Sarah Goody, I love that name, Sarah Goody, who began climate work in sixth grade and now is a senior at Redwood High School in Oxford, California. Quote, there are just so many other things, you know, other than saving the world to focus on. Yes, there are. And they are taking our attention away from climate organizing. Yes, Goody. Goody has watched burnout take its toll on the enthusiasm many see as central to the youth climate music, climate movement. I think it's over time starting to lose some of that passion and, and, and some of that energy. Yes, the youngsters are starting to figure out that they are doomed and uh, just, uh, you know, what would, you know, I, I really, I mean, all joking aside, you know, I, I do this thought experiment on myself all the time. Like, like if I really, you know, instead of being 62, if I were 22 years old right now looking at my own future, or if I had made the horrible blunder of actually having children, uh, what the, the state I would be in. Uh, every day, I thank my vasectomy. Uh, anyway, okay. Here are a few challenges 
today's young climate activists say they face. Okay, the number one challenge being faced, adults abdicating their responsibility. Yes. Uh, and <coughs> this is some uh, shrink Julie Cifuentes from, from Oregon, uh, you know, who works with these kids um, and interviews with young organizers for a study published in June. Sifuente said many told her they feel a sense of responsibility in addressing climate change, but they often feel society has put the onus on youth to fix environmental issues caused by previous generations. Yes. Uh, I, I love this. Uh, you know, this shrink. Quote, to wait for young activists sort of feels like a dismissal of responsibility of adults who could do something now. Exactly what could adults do now? I would like to never mention in the article. Um, Mariama Warsame, age 18, said she sees this playing out in her own activism, especially when adults affirm her work without actually make making changes. Quote, we're used, we, meaning the kids, are used for their benefit, and, and good God, I, I mean, I could go off on an entire rant about how Greta Thunberg has been used uh, by these little lefty greenies, that she has completely been used uh, by the lefty greenie establishment. Uh, that, that's a whole nother, if you want to find out more of that, more about that, you need to look up the work of Corey Morningstar, uh, talking about the, this very subject, how Greta Thunberg and, and, and all these others are, are being just completely taken advantage of and used as little pawns by these little lefty greenies. Anyway, uh, this is the 18-year-old girl, Warsame. <clears throat> we are used for their benefit when they are ignoring our cries for help with climate justice. A lot of the time, I feel like it's just demonstrative, and they don't necessarily, necessarily care what we have to say. Close quote. What was that Donald Trump quote about Greta? I can't remember. It was a great quote that uh, both Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin, you, you know, just laughing off uh, Greta and all the rest of them. And I, 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 I'm going to try. Uh, okay, guys, I just can't resist it. Activism amid a panic worsens disparities. As the corona panic continues to impact daily life, as the corona panic continues to impact daily life, environmental organizers say. The current crisis, <coughs> yes, the current crisis, you know that, do you remember the current crisis they're talking about? You know that current crisis has detracted from efforts to fight the looming climate crisis since the beginning of the panic. Organizers in positions of privilege have been more likely to stay involved in climate work while marginalized activists have been forced to navigate the compounding effects of corona panic on their lives. And I'm going to uh, move on. Anyway, 
And then, of course, there is the uh, probably the you know the Sisyphean challenge, an uphill battle to make even incremental change. Yes. The passage earlier this month of the Inflation Reduction Act has been heralded as a landmark piece of legislation. Yes, due to its climate provisions, but activists say elected officials should be taking more drastic steps. This is Maya Hidalgo, age 18, of Bloomington, Minnesota. Quote, a lot of times our representatives are not really looking forward. They're not looking ahead and seeing those effects of climate change. They are looking in the near future to see what will benefit them now. Yes. Warsam says she has been in many situations where her attendance and voice have been seen as an asset to legislators instead of a point of genuine concern. And then, of course, we have the, uh, you know, we have life goes on. Life goes on even as many young people are taking up the cause of climate action, the mental and emotional tolls of their work are continuing to mount. Organizers said it is often a challenge to balance activism with other elements of their lives, you know, such as making salsa and making dinner for their dog. Uh, so what has Hidalgo, Miss Hidalgo, been doing from composting? She's out composting and creating a community garden. Yes. Uh, you know, as she looks to college, she said she plans to continue to focus and localize her organizing efforts, which she hopes to incorporate into her career. And yes, a, going into a career in uh, climate frustration is a good career choice. Quote, I try to focus on just a few things so it does not feel overwhelming. Yes, you can feel like you're making progress in a specific area instead of the broader problem because no one can solve the whole problem. So uh, we have 55 comments so far. And right here we're going to hear from DBK 1955. 1955, so DBK is 67 years old. This is a 67 year old man or woman weighing in on this article. <clears throat> Take it away, DBK 1955. 19 thumbs up to this comment. While nearly everyone, while nearly everyone recognizes that there are myriad problems ahead, most of us are also not enamored of being lectured and or screamed at by teenagers and 20-somethings who have a mono-dimensional and very short-range view of the issues. To consider just one, to consider just one such issue, solar panels. There you go. Solar panels are absolutely wonderful and oh so green until you consider the environmental impact of mining, refining, shipping, manufacturing them, again shipping, and installing them, recognizing that they do not work when the sun does not shine, 
They have diminishing returns as they age and or get dirty. They require still more energy to remove or replace them and are basically non-recyclable and a toxic waste when they reach the end of their life cycle. Maybe solar panels are not so wonderful after all. Virtually every other manufactured green power source faces similar issues, as do traditional sources such as nuclear power, hydroelectric power, and fossil fuels. California is going to ban petroleum-powered cars by 2035 in favor of EVs when they cannot even meet the electrical power demands of right now? Please! Global issues are complex and there are no trivial solutions. Every sentient person can do what they can to minimize their own impact. Are you listening, Hollywood celebrities? And adapt to the changing environment, the continuously increasing world population, hmm. and the efforts of the third world to lift itself out of seemingly perpetual misery. Wishing accomplishes nothing. YMMV is the closing comment. YMMV, I'm thinking, means you make me vomit. 19 thumbs up. Anyway, guys, since uh, this camera, I have no way of knowing if it's ever turned off. YMMV, I think we, uh, Kirk, can we make a YMMV hat? You make me vomit. We have a new uh, acronym for the collapse, YMMV. I want to thank DBK1955. I don't know if YMMV really means you make me vomit, but uh, solar panels make me vomit. So I guess they make 19 other people thumbing up the comment vomit. Sancho Panza, do solar panels make you vomit? Anyway, I got to get out there and get back to making my dog his dinner. Hopefully he won't vomit. Bye, guys. You make me vomit. You make me vomit.